some vulnerability management. In this video, I'll be looking at our first objective, which is the definition of vulnerability management. But before I dive in, I'd like to introduce myself. Alright, so who am I? Uh, my name is Oluwashi Yakirudi. I'm from Nigeria. I'm a practicing cybersecurity professional with over seven years of experience and still accounting. I've worked in industries such as telecommunication, consulting, and educational services. Uh, currently, with certification with the following vendors Cisco, AWS, Skybox, and Squalis, and also other ones that I'm working on uh, in pipeline. Uh, also, I'm a certified technical instructor. Uh, so in my spare time, uh, I love to watch movies uh, and also go for hiking with my friends. Uh, in terms of family life, I'm a husband to one wife and a father to two lovely kids. Uh, you can actually follow me on my LinkedIn um, handle. You can reach out to me on my LinkedIn handle or you can send me a private email. Or you can also drop me a comment on this video and definitely I will respond back to you and reach out to you. Alright, so with much further ado, uh, let's actually dive in. All right, so what is vulnerability management? Uh, vulnerability management is the process, all right? It's the process of identifying, evaluating, remediating, and reporting on security vulnerabilities uh, in the system and softwares uh, that run on them. Uh, before I dive into you know into all of these um, definitions, uh, I want us to pay attention to this image here. All right, so um, consider you have a valuable behind closed door, uh, but you you have a lock that it's you have a lock that is open, you know, to access that the particular closed door. So this itself can be considered as a vulnerability, meaning that anybody that gains access to where that. Um, valuable is can actually just open that um, lock and just get in and gain access to this valuable. So the, the process whereby you have this weak form of control um, is called vulnerability. And I actually just wanted to you know make a mental note of this so that you can you can pay the painter picture of this for you so that as we go on you would have a proper understanding of what um, vulnerability management is and how important it is. All right. So going back to our definition. I said vulnerability environment is a process of identifying, um, evaluating, remediating, and reporting on security vulnerabilities in systems and software that runs on them. Now, the key word I want us to pay attention to here is the word uh, process. So, what does that mean? It means that there's a process to identifying vulnerability, uh, there's a process to evaluating vulnerability, there's a process to remediate, and also there's a process to reporting. And the major way or the one way in which we identify vulnerability is through uh, vulnerability uh, assessment. All right, we use that to ensure that uh, we identify those vulnerabilities. And in subsequent videos, I'll, I'll dive more into vulnerability assessment and things like that. Uh, also, for evaluating, um, after we've identified those vulnerabilities, how do we evaluate those vulnerabilities? How do we analyze those vulnerabilities? Uh, to know which one we should, you know, focus on in terms of remediating and things like that. So for for that, uh, um, there's something we call severity levels, and severity level, uh, the the four severity level that is used in vulnerability management. Uh, the first one is critical. Uh, pardon my writing. <laughs> uh, the second one is high. The third one is medium. And the fourth one is low. Now, the next question somebody might ask me is, so how do we come about with this scoring? How do we know uh, which one is medium? How do we know which one is high? Now, there's a scoring system called um, severity, called um, Common Vulnerability Scoring System. Uh, it's currently at version 3.1, and they have a scoring uh, matrix whereby they come up with numbers to classify vulnerabilities on this severity level. And for critical, the scoring number is from within the range of 9 to 10. Uh, for medium, for high scary, is within 7 to 8.9. For medium, is within 4.0 uh, to 6.9. And low is within 0 0.1 to 3.9. So these are the scoring system whereby uh, severity level have been classified uh, in terms of how we can actually use to prioritize the remediating um, of those vulnerabilities. So when we say remediating, what does remediating mean? Remediating simply means how do we respond 
how do we respond uh, to the to the vulnerabilities? That's what remediation actually means. So um, that the the different levels. There's something we call risk treatment. Uh, we use risk treatment to respond to vulnerability that actually has been identified, and those risk treatments risk treatment are uh, four levels. Uh, something we call uh, risk avoidance. This is how we ensure that we avoid those risks that actually has been identified. Uh, secondly, there's something we call risk transference. This is um, outsourcing the responsibility of remediating that risk to a third party, or we 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 we, we transfer um, the response of that risk to a third party. So this is more more like you know more like using an insurance model uh, to respond to a particular risk. And thirdly, with something we call risk acceptance. Uh, these are the type of risk uh, that we that we tend to accept because there's nothing we can do about it. And the first one is risk uh, mitigation. This is where we, you know, we put in some specific controls or we, we decide to do something about um, that particular risk or vulnerability that actually has been identified. All right. So um, diving into some of the common terms used in vulnerability management, there's something we call um, the the word here vulnerability is a weakness in the system. Uh, meaning that it's, it's it's that's a more like we use the word loophole. You know that that an exploit that an attacker that can actually actor can actually you know utilize to gain access to a system. Uh, also assets asset is anything that's of value uh, to an organization. So that that asset could be tangible asset or it could be intangible asset. So for tangible means that it's we can quantify them in terms of monetary value. We can add monetary value to quantify the value of that asset. And for intangible, it means things that are not visible to the highs, but uh, has tremendous value like reputation, you know, and things like that. Uh, also, we have the word threat. Uh, threat is a potential harm to an asset. Um, also, we have risk. Uh, risk is the likelihood of a threat materializing. So. Uh, for risk, uh, risk actually means uh, vulnerability. Uh, risk actually has a, a formula for uh, vulnerability times threat. That's what the definition or, uh, or the, how risk is actually uh, been been defined. And also for exposure factor, it refers to how um, a threat is how an asset is exposed to a particular threat. So uh, it's actually measured in percentage. So it could be five percent, could be ten percent. Um, also, uh, something we call impact. Impact refers to the level of damage uh, to an asset. So that impact could be high, it could be medium, it also could be low. And also for exploit, uh, exploit is taking advantage of a weakness to cause damage to an asset. Uh, so that's where an attacker, you know, wants exploit take advantage of a particular vulnerability that is known and. And then you know use that to exploit, use that to take advantage of that weakness to to cause a negative um, um, to cause negative uh, to cause a damage a negative damage on, to an asset. And also there's something we call CVE, which is common vulnerabilities and, and exposure. So that is a public repository for where you can gather more information about a vulnerability. And most of the time, this each vulnerability has a number, so it's it's more like you see something that looks like this. Uh, CVE, let's say 101, uh, you know, um, it, just, it just has a particular number, you know, that classifies or that you can use to actually identify uh, that particular vulnerability. And then uh, I spoke about the scoring system the other time, which is called CVSS. It's currently version 3.1. Uh, what that actually is, is that um, it, it, it uses three different metrics to come up with the scoring system, with that score. Uh, so we have the base. We have the temporal and we have the environmental matrix group. So for base, base just simply means it looks at it from exploitability and impact. The exploitability of that vulnerability and the impact it will have, um, be it confidentiality, impact on confidentiality, impact on availability and impact on, on integrity. 
uh, of that system. Also for Temple, Temple looks at provides information on the current state of that vulnerability. Uh, that vulnerability does, is there a patch for that vulnerability? Is there a workaround or a fix for that vulnerability? Uh, what is the exploit level? Are they are they exploits? You know, for that for that particular vulnerability. And for environmental metrics, it it just simply speaks to how can you customize um, that particular vulnerability to your environment, meaning that this this vulnerability, if it happens in your environment, how will it impact the um, confidentiality? How will it impact um, integrity? And, and how will it impact availability? So, environmental metric groups speaks more to you know customizing it to your own peculiar environment as to the general um, base core that has been provided um, all right and then for threat actor or threat agents these are entities um, they are people the programs or hardware that deliberately exploit systems so most of the time this categorizes more into people but we can use programs more like in hardware and more like in malware you know to to explain particular vulnerability and for safeguard safeguard means the controls that we put in place to prevent to reduce uh, the impact of a vulnerability or a particular threat all right so i know that's a lot of <laughs> a lot of attempts to you know soak in uh soak in at once but i, I, I want to see uh, so finally let's look at how we can put it all together and see how those how those words actually come into play all right, so this is uh, an internet banking application login page. This is just a demo that I'm just using to explain the concept. Uh, so this is a bank. So a bank here. So to the bank, uh, this banking application is an asset. All right. Uh, so this asset was probably developed by some deep programmers. You know, so the, probably the programmer or a web development team that actually came about with this, but then they have to pay for it. So it's an asset to the bank and um, to the bank itself. So this is an asset. So this web application itself is an asset, and this um, asset, for example, let's say it's it's vulnerable to SQL injection. Uh, so SQL injection here is the vulnerability. So SQL injection means that a threat actor. So going back to that word, threat actor, which is an attacker, a person. Let's use a person here. This person uh, tends to. Uh, you know, writing some um, query statements to generate to to uh, to be able to to um, access information from the database. So meaning that uh, a, a an attacker can write a query statement, for example, or oh, one equals to one, iPhone iPhone, and does the same thing here. One equals to one. This is just a simple SQL statement. Uh, so this SQL statement would uh, interact with the database of this application to gather information as we get um, more um, information about probably the customer or or the account numbers, you know, on that particular uh, web application. So that's what SQL um, actually. Um, um, SQL, in, um, SQL injection actually mean. Uh, so for that, if this particular, so the threat here is uh, loss loss of data. Okay, so that's that's the threat. That's the threat that we are looking at here. Loss of data. Um, so the the uh, we can also look at loss of data, or, which is also we can also call it theft theft of um, critical information of customer data so the customer data here can be stolen you know and 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 that could be that is actually one of it that's a threat here so with that threat um so the next thing that happens once that threat materializes then it becomes it becomes a risk so here the risk here is um in terms of confidentiality because um, customer information uh, is going to be is going to be disclosed here yeah, based on the uh, if this attack is actually successful so the impact here is high because it's going to affect confidentiality uh, of that information of that uh, confidentiality of customer information and also uh, the exploit here is when an attacker uses this code itself these are uh, exploits because it's these are the codes that the attacker tend to use to gain to be able to um, access that um, to be able to exploit that vulnerability of sql injection 
And so what's a so the process here, this the process of vulnerability management here, how we can actually bring this all together in terms of vulnerability management is a process whereby um, a, a security professional a security professional tends to look at this system, this this mobile application system, all right, looks at mobile application system and tries to identify tries to identify the vulnerability itself and try to identify the vulnerability itself and remediate um analyze those vulnerability remediate those vulnerability and report on those vulnerability so with that process means that even if an meaning that a security professional is already aware of the vulnerabilities of this web application has done on the remediation use a, a safeguard which is input validation Input validation is one of the ways in which you can safeguard against um, SQL injection because you're ensuring that the the input that has been imputed in this first field are validated. Uh, they don't contain any specific characters that can alter the database or provide information uh, to the threat actor as we get that. So that that's pretty much it uh, in this video. I thank you very much for watching. Uh, I like for you to subscribe to this video and see. Look forward to seeing you uh, in my next video. Mm -hmm.